Okay, hello everyone. So we've done a fabulous job the past couple weeks. We have produced lots of flies. And now we got all these flies sitting over here in this little sheet labeled done because we're all through with them. We don't need them anymore. So the fun job you have this week in lab is cleaning up. We've got to scrub out all these all these fly balls that are just full of swarming flies. So how are we going to do that? Well, uh, one obvious plot problem right away is some of these bottles are just thick with flies, hundreds of flies in there. And we don't want to waste a lot of time with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to knock out all of these flies in a crude, blunt, clumsy way, but it'll be working. And then we're going to just wash them out. Okay, so the way to knock out all these flies and moss is you're going to take your fly bottle. You all got your names on there so I know who did it. And you're going to take them over to this little refrigerator we've got here in the lab. You all saw this as you came in the door. Uh, this has got a whole bunch of herbarium specimens in it. So uh, we're not going to mess with those. And we're only going to have our flies in here briefly. So what you can do is just put your fly balls in here. I put this one in about 15 minutes ago. And all the flies are out cold. Literally out cold. So they're not doing anything right now. So that means I can take them over to the sink and get rid of them. All right, so this is important. You do not want to leave them in that cold refrigerator so long that it freezes solid because it'll be really hard to clean them up. 15, 20 minutes, that's great. They're, they're, that knocks out the flies so we can safely remove the stopper. Uh, so then what you do is you come over here. We're going to have to throw out the label. Just toss it in the trash. I'm getting a little water running here. We have these great big bottle brushes. So then what I do is just Yeah, there they go. All right. Then use the bottle brush. Get in there and just work all those pieces out. Get the medium loosened. So you don't even have to get your hands dirty. Don't worry. Uh, and remember, some of the balls you've noticed there are cooked in onto the glass. That's not good. So don't you be one of those. Make sure you get all the fusey out. Also notice this bottle brush. Aim it away from everybody when you do this because it will splat. I'll give it a couple more races. Flies all gone. Now it's not quite as clean as we like, so the other thing you're going to do, notice that, oh, notice that over here I have a big mouse cage. It says dirty, so just put those bottles in there. Uh, when when this fills up, I will take it downstairs and autoclave all the bottles, which means they'll be hit with hot pressurized steam. They will be sterilized and very clean. So that's what you need to do this week. Spend about 15 minutes knocking all the flies unconscious, then run them down the drain, thoroughly scrub out the bottle with a bottle brush, put them in here. Well that sounds like an easy week, I know. There's more though. Okay, here's the other thing you're going to do this week. Probably not in your lab section because I don't think they're quite ready yet. But you've all got in the incubator these bottles that look kind of like this. So you've got, this one for instance is female scarlet by male brown. And they're all procreating in there. They don't have any babies that I can see yet. 
I can see hints of first instar larva, but that's about it. So these are going to have to grow up a bit. After these happy adults have been breeding in here for four to six days, I want you to clear the bottle, get rid of them all. And then we begin to wait. We wait for the next generation, the F1s, to emerge. When the F1s emerge, you know, you don't have to rush in. You don't have you don't have to do it. You don't have to catch these as soon as they come out. We don't have to collect virgins, anything like that. So you can just sort of wait. You know, not more than a week, but you can wait a bit. And uh, what you want is lots and lots of adults buzzing around in here. And then you're going to anesthetize them, uh, put them under the microscope, and carefully score them. Okay, so there's going to be a Google Drive spreadsheet. And what I want you to do is record completely as many of these flies as you can get. You're going to put them on the microscope and you're going to score them. You're going to count the number of male and female for each of the brown-eyed flies, the scarlet-eyed flies, and the wild-type flies. We anticipate that if all went well, the cross was done exactly right, you will have nothing but wild type flies. Then you'll score those. But if you get others, it'll help us diagnose what went wrong with your cross. So we want you to enter all those. We want you to look at them all and score them. So you're going to be doing that probably end of this coming week or early the next week. And the end result will be a spreadsheet full of numbers for each group doing their, their work. I want you to aim for at least 50 flies counted and scored by each group. That'll give us a nice little sample to look at. Okay, is that all you got to do? Yeah, and then once you're done with that, you, you do the usual routine. You can throw them out. Uh, you're going to have to wash the bottle again. You'll be all through with that part of the experiment, except when you're counting them, I want you to pull out three, bra uh, three wild-type males and three wild-type females from this bottle and put them in a fresh bottle that you will make. Okay, this will be for the F2s. Uh, you can you can exercise a little redundancy and do two of these. That would be kind of nice. So then three males and three females for each bottle. Uh, again, you don't have to worry about virgins with this cross. Because we're crossing brothers with sisters, if, for instance, there had been a little incest going on in the bottle that you didn't know about, we don't care. That's They're supposed to cross with those individuals. So we don't need to do any of that rigmarole of trying to isolate virgins. Just take any three males and three females from the group that you're counting. Make sure they're all wild-type wild type eyes, though. That's one criterion. And set them aside, and we'll wait for the F2s to come along in about nine days or in about two weeks. The F2s will be very interesting. You'll see. Okay, so that's, that's our project for this week is wash bottles, okay? We're going to wash all these bottles. Then we are going to count all the F1 flies. And we are going to set up the F2 cross. Those are the three things we got to do this week. Uh, notice also I labeled this bottle. It's kind of long, but these are ST plus BW plus by ST plus BW plus I'd like you to make sure to put all that on there because we want to be crystal clear about who's going into these bottles. Okay, then we, yeah, like I say, we wait. Isn't that the exciting thing about flies? You got to wait, wait, wait until they get their job done. Uh, but yeah, we'll wrap this experiment up in the next two weeks after that. And uh, then we get to start on another one. We're going to start doing a mapping cross, but we'll talk more about that later. All right. Now, one other thing. There's one other part of this assignment I'm going to give you. Uh, that is that at some point, you've got to write a lab report. 
So one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm also going to give you a little quick overview of some online databases that you can use to get the kinds of uh, information you need to write the introduction to your lab report. And there will be a, an assignment on Canvas that I'll want each group to submit a couple of paragraphs, that's all, just a couple of paragraphs describing the mutants that you're working with based on information you can get from Flybase. Okay, so let me add that on to here. All right, so here we are. We're in uh, Flybase. That's flybase.org. I want you to use this website. It's a database of Drosophila genes and genomes, as you see it says right there at the top. So it's got a huge amount of information, far more information that we can possibly digest or use right now. So we're going to take a fairly superficial look at this. But what this means is this is one really handy site where you can get all the information you need to write the introduction to your lab report. Isn't that convenient? Uh, think of this as kind of a professional Wikipedia. It's got access to all the tools you need. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we're going we're gonna to take a really easy approach to it. If you go up there and look at the top right corner of the window, there's something that says J2G. That's short for Jump to Gene. And we're just going to go look at our two genes. We're going to look at brown and scarlet. Those are the ones you've been working with. So all you got to do is whoop, type in that abbreviation. There's BW. Let's go, let's go see BW. We just click on that. And there it is. This is the database entry for, as it says here, DML BW. DML is just short for Drosophila melanogaster. There's our species. Uh, the name of this gene is brown. We've got a bunch of information we don't need to dig into right, to, right now. Uh, and there's, scrolling down, there's a whole bunch of information. Now, one of the things I want you to make note of is the recombination map. It's not so important for this cross, but our next cross will care a great deal about the information about the recombination map. So you notice what it says here. It says that BW is at location 2-103. That means it's on chromosome 2 at uh, the map location 103. Again, we'll get into this next week or the week thereafter. So that's going to be kind of nice to know. As you see down here, it also shows you a little portion of the map, of the chromosome map. There's, there's brown. There's a bunch of other stuff next to it. We could, if we wanted to, get the full nucleotide sequence for it. We don't want to, but just file that away. Here's an easy way to find the sequence of these genes. Let's scroll down a little further. Uh, we're kind of interested in function. We want to know what this gene does. But look, it's it's got a little bit short, a short summary of what it does. It says, okay, it enables transmembrane transporter activity. So this gene is coding for a transporter. It carries things across membranes. Uh, it's got ATP binding activity. It, it, got ATP hydrolysis. It, you get the idea. You remember all that from cell biology. Uh, let's, let's cut short with this. Let's just go straight to the summaries. Again, we don't need all the details. Let's look at the summaries. So it just tells you the basics. So uh, Brown encodes a member of the traffic ATPase or ABC family of membrane transporters. Again, emphasizing it's it's a transporter gene. Uh, we got a whole bunch of details here in the summaries. You can browse through it, see if there's anything of interest to pick out. Uh, but it's telling us a little bit about what it does. And then we also see down here it's got a phenotypic description. This is from the Red Book. The Red Book is the big catalog of Drosophila mutants, much of which has been encoded here on Flybase. It tells you a little bit more about it, what it does. So it's uh, it says, okay, it's going to affect 
the red pig red pigments are lacking so we only have the brown pigments there and xanthomatin the red pigment is mostly replaced with dihydroxy xanthomatin etc etc uh, you try to pull out what's of interest to you here uh, we can also see further there's more information look at all this information there are so many things here uh, imagine though not for this not for this lab report but imagine that you're doing a senior seminar or a biocommunications type paper uh, there's all kinds of useful stuff here like human disease associations what human diseases are associated with and uh, you can look in there and it will tell you all this information uh, in particular if you go down here it says OMIM phenotype OMIM is another in database I will introduce you to later but not today OMIM is the on online Mendelian inheritance in man, in man it is built from an older database older book but it's got oodles of information there too specifically about human effects many of the genes we look at in flies have homologs in humans so this this one for instance it's a guanine transporter we work with guanine humans have this and so you can see here it affects a couple of different things in um, humans and if you want you can you can click on those look to those that'll take you to OMIM itself Again, not for this lab report, but just if you're curious, all kinds of fun stuff you can learn. Okay, so I want you to go into here and just browse. Get a feel for using this kind of database and what kinds of information uh, is present there. And again, there's far more information than you have any use for yet. Someday, maybe. Okay, let's take a look at Scarlet. We just go back up here to jump to Gene, and we just go ST and we can tell it to go there it is and here we have Drosophila melanogaster scarlet it's protein coding gene it's part of a membrane spanning permease system so this is again related to transport it's necessary for the transport of pigment precursors into pigment cells responsible for eye color so uh, yeah so we're going to have another transporter that's going to bring these things in so uh, again same deal you can browse through here you can see all this cool stuff about it so much detail yeah we can also browse and there's a whole bunch of human effects again there's a human homolog to scarlet that we can see and it's, it's sometimes associated with various diseases like gallbladder disease and so forth yeah if you're curious go look at that uh, this also can kind of work in reverse if we went back to the opening page there is a section where you can just start with a disease and say okay is there anything that flies that is associated with human diseases and here's oh, here's a human disease I'm interested in and it will spit back to you a list of all the genes that are known to be affiliated with that disease in Drosophila, the human disease and its association in Drosophila. Uh, there's, so there's a lot of depth here to play with. Okay, so what do I want you to do for this week? You know, I've already told you a bunch of things you got to get done in the lab. You got all that fly scoring, you got the bottle washing, you got to set up the next, the F2 cross. Oh, so much to do. And then on top of that, I'm going to tell you, I want you to write a piece of the introduction to your lab report so work on this as a group and I just want a short section you know paragraph two paragraphs where you summarize useful information about brown and scarlet that's all and you're going to submit that on canvas and I will evaluate it and then you'll have a small portion of your lab report done I'm going to be doing this in the next couple of weeks. I'll also ask you later to write a summary of your methods, and you'll include that in a Canvas uh, Canvas assignment. And I'll take a look at that. 
Uh, so the whole idea is that you'll eventually be able to just sort of slap all this stuff together and there's your lab report. It'll be done, it'll be pre-graded, and I'll be able to just glance through it and see if you fixed any any things I suggest. And everyone will get an A. Is that the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. Everyone gets an A. Just got to do the work. Okay, that's all. We will talk to you later in class, Monday.